Joining me now, John Bolton, who's a former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations and a Fox News contributor. And so this seems to be the Palestinian strategy, is to get out there and talk about the civilian deaths, which no one likes to see, but which Israel's defenders say, A, they try to avoid, and B, Hamas is putting these people in the line of fire, and there's not much Israel can do about it if they want to stop the, the rocket fire coming into Israel. Well, it's the inevitable consequence of Hamas's strategy, and very cynical, uh, somewhat successful, but otherwise you have to say to Israel, your civilians are going to be in jeopardy because of the barbaric way that Hamas uses its civilians to shield its military capabilities. So I think for Israel, they've got to just grit their teeth and keep on going. So to those Americans who don't pay as close attention to this, I mean, you see the children wailing and you see these devastating scenes with these dead bodies and they appear to be innocent civilians. I mean, what do they need to understand? Well, they need to understand that the instigator of this uh, has been Hamas, and I think more fundamentally, Iran, which has supplied the longer range, more sophisticated rocket capabilities. Now explain that. that. Why does Iran have. want to see this war going on between Hamas and Israel? Because Hamas and Hezbollah in Lebanon are two sides of the same coin from Iran's point of view. They're ways to put military pressure on Israeli civilians to keep Israel preoccupied and pinned down and not focused on Iran's nuclear weapons program, which continues to move along. It's a very complicated situation here, but the fact is what Hamas has done over the years is conduct war against the state of Israel. And unless you're prepared to say that uh, you can only engage in war in a limited fashion when you're constantly being attacked, clearly Israel's got uh, both a right and I think an obligation, a moral obligation, to protect its own mm -hmm. civilians. We would feel the same way. This is, uh, and Andy McCarthy has an interesting piece uh, out, out today in uh, PJ Media where he talks about the Hamas Charter, Article 7, which says the time will not come, the prophet uh, says the time will not come until Muslims will fight the Jews and kill them, until the Jews hide behind rocks and trees, which will cry, oh Muslim, there is a Jew hiding behind me, come on and kill him. When you read this, you think, how, how on earth is Netanyahu going to negotiate with these people? Well, he shouldn't. I don't think you can negotiate with terrorists. And I think fundamentally, the Palestinian Authority has demonstrated it's not interested in negotiations either by forming a coalition with Hamas. This should result in both of them being shunned, in my view. Instead, the Obama administration has just given over $50 million more, quote unquote, humanitarian assistance mm -hmm. to the Palestinian Authority. And now today, the FAA banned all U.S. aircraft from flying to Israel's main international airport. And Israel sort of responded by saying, gee, thanks a lot, that's going to help a lot, meaning it's not going to help us at all. What are your thoughts? Well, I'd like to know who influenced the FAA's decision, because I think in the obama Kerry paradigm of the world, this puts economic pressure on Israel to increase the likelihood they'll agree to a ceasefire. In my way of thinking, it proves precisely the opposite. It's why Israel can't live under this constant threat of being rocketed. They don't seem shy about defending themselves why should despite they be? international why pressure. Why should they be? You know, international public opinion, in my view, can go take a flying leap. When your civilians are being attacked by terrorists, threatened by a nuclear weapon state like Iran, you do what you have to do to protect your people, especially in a democratic society. Last question. You've explained why Iran fighting uh, between ha Hamas and Israel. Why is Hamas doing I mean, they take their marching orders from Iran, or is it all about ginning up a propaganda uh, campaign for them? Oh, look at, you know, what's happening to us, poor us, and the evil Israel. Well, I think it's a combination of things. I think, obviously, it's what Iran wants to do. But I think this is terrorists behaving like terrorists behave. It's, they're motivated by ideology. They're not uh, motivated by the same factors that affect the average American suburban household, mm -hmm. household. They're motivated by a desire to destroy the state of Israel. And yeah. every time we tell Israel to negotiate a ceasefire, that day gets a little bit closer. It's Hamas Charter Article 7. Ambassador, good to see you. Thank you.